Political analyst Senate Solomon joins us now for more on that story. Senate, good to have you and thank you very much uh, for uh, coming on launching political fights against uh, a legal matter or a political campaign to, to fight uh, transgressions of law is, is, is commonplace now almost in, 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 in our politics in the country. But uh, the question is, how, how effective is this as a strategy, right? The, the, this specific defense that mostly political leaders want to employ uh, against allegations of wrongdoing. I don't think that it has proven very effective in the past, and I don't think that it would prove effective in this instance. But I definitely think it is something to deter attention away from oneself and to deflect from what's actually happening. And I think that that's what the former speaker is doing in this instance. The, 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 that particular strategy, if you look at some of the more popular leaders, it seems to have worked, certainly, to to get them to, to get some kind of protection from the party mm -hmm. at least uh, and be protected from, from, from particular institutions. You think it's, it's popularity-based and the, the former Speaker of the National Assembly could probably be misreading it at this particular point in terms of her level of popularity within the party in order she will be able to garner that kind of reaction. I think that with this particular instance, I don't think that it would work. I think that there has been a lot of, um, I think that she's been on an uphill battle for quite some time. You would know that prior to this happening, there was a possible motion of low confidence that the other political parties wanted to launch. Then there was the raiding of a home. Now there is the charges that are leveled against her and so on. And I think while political parties often stay with the candidate, I think that it's not necessarily possible in this instance given that uh, it is an election year and it would actually prove to be costly if the ANC did outright support their person. So let's look at what you say. She says, let's look at the weaknesses and strength of this case and the difficulties that this case is going to face. I have not seen the, the details of the case because, of course, uh, it has not been furnished to me. But all I've seen is leaks that are out in, 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 in the open that have been given to the newspaper. So that's what I rely on. And from what mm -hmm. I am reading it's Pemi Majordina who is behind these leaks because she wants me to step aside. Is, is it because the speaker believes that really she didn't do any wrong or she knows that wrongdoing did occur uh, and, 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 and she wants to, to, to pin it on something else? I don't quite know what the situation is between the speaker and the chief whip. And I think that that could possibly be internal rivalry. But I think that it, at this point, it is beyond just political rivalry because for a court of law to charge you with uh, counts of corruption as well as money laundering, I think that there must be some sort of evidence. And I think as the case starts unfolding, we will see who the key witnesses will be. We will see uh, what kind of evidence the state has and so on. And I think in that instance, the, case, the court would be able to prove whether it is politically influenced and whether there is actual merit to the case. But for now, it looks quite serious. But again, we don't know what the situation is in terms of people fighting against each other, especially in the run-up of securing positions. But given that the former speaker has now resigned, I don't think that uh, the, the possibility of it just being uh, a case of someone wanting to smear another person can hold. Yeah. So we the newspapers were, were reporting that in a leaked kind of, uh, I think it was a Zoom meeting of some sort, Pemi Madudino has then overheard to say she must just be charged so that she can step aside. And, 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 <laughs> and that's, that's what she is quoting there. So it, it could be true that uh, Pemi is impelled by political intentions, uh, even though there is wrongdoing. I, I do think that it's the case, because let's be honest, if you get charged... Uh, then the ANC step aside rule comes into effect and then the uh, integrity commission doesn't have to deal with it, which makes it much easier for the ANC. Um, but in this instance, she did stay, uh, she did resign even before that, and she did hand herself over before being charged. Therefore, the integrity commission doesn't have to do anything. Therefore, uh, they are in the clear in terms of that. So I think it would have just eased the entire process for them. And I think that could possibly have motivated 
that particular statement. But again, we are not sure what the intentions were behind the statement and what the context for it was. Does then this um, action, be it coming from Pemi Majodina, give it her give her some kind of political mileage? Does it give her greater political mileage? Is it going to have positive political consequences for her, but also maybe for her party? Does it improve her social capital? Does it improve her former political position? Because the, the hope is saying maybe she will then be elevated to to position of National uh, uh, Assembly Speaker. What is quite fascinating is once the position becomes vacant, then the position for uh, the speaker and deputy speaker then needs to be filled. And I think those are very important positions in terms of uh, parliament. So I think I don't know at this point if that is something that the chief whip is looking at, but obviously it's quite a prestigious position to hold. I don't think that this would benefit the ANC in any instance, especially given that it is an election year. In election years, you want to have as less or as little drama as possible. You don't want skeletons coming out. You don't want people being prosecuted and so on because it does negatively impact in terms of the political party. And as a political party, you often have to distance yourself from um, the people and the cadres that could be part of your political party because you don't want to taint yourself in the voters' eyes in the run-up to the elections. At this point, we are not sure if the um, chief whip will be going for that position. I can, again, we don't know whether it was pettiness. We don't know if the quote was taken out of context. So it would be difficult to say, but what would be interesting would be to see who fills those positions of both Speaker of Parliament and Deputy Speaker of Parliament. So you, you, you mentioned something interesting, that the party would need to distance itself. Well, in that particular clip we played, the spokesperson of the party says they don't know anything about this politically motivated what what. They say they leave it to the law. But it's interesting that you have some key figures in the party, like the former uh, National Assembly Speaker, Balagambete, uh, uh, big there, supporting Nosifio Mapisa, uh, and um, there are some members of the ANC uh, that we are seeing tweeting, even though they are not really upfront in their support uh, for her, but tweeting messages uh, of, of, of support for her. Does that lend some kind of credence and credibility to the claims that she's making? I don't know, but I think that one of the things that we should also take into consideration is that these people know each other for years. And over the years, while they may have started off as colleagues, friendships do tend to form. And as a result of that, it could just be that you are supporting your friend through a difficult time. And it could also be that you have found yourself in a similar position uh, because let's be honest, some of the ANC's uh, leaders or some prominent leaders have been exposed to controversy over the years and they've been exposed to being out in the cold and so on. So I think it could just be that people are supporting their friend um, and that it could possibly have nothing to do with choosing sides. But again, in, in an election year, it is quite dangerous for people to be outright in terms of choosing sides because you don't know whether you will then be given a position, uh, whether you'll be deployed to certain offices, or whether you could just be cut off from the list. So I think that's also why people are playing it safe and trying to distance themselves in as much as they can. Yeah, it, it is election year, so I suppose it, it does add a, a layer of, of complication uh, for, for them because I mean, you don't know what will happen by your uh, uh, allegiance to, uh, to a speaker who's going on. She, she of course, um, is, is, is going out to, to pension. Um, she is not in the NEC, uh, but it looks like she's not in on any list anyway because she was going out uh, uh, on pension. So do you think at some point it occurred to her that even in that NEC, the balance of forces are not in her favor? And so something like a motion of no confidence would have actually uh, not been, uh, would have actually been, 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 been um, supported actually by many uh, to, to, to take her out. I do think that uh, she obviously took her uh, reputation into consideration when she made the decision that she had made. I think that she acted in her best interest, but I also think that 
it was quite noble for her to step down um, so that she didn't have to make the process difficult in terms of her being removed as the Speaker of Parliament. I do think her resignation came just in time, and I think it was quite graceful of her to take herself to the police station and to actually say that she wants the law to prevail and to actually follow the process and so on. I think over the years, we've seen a number of people refuse to leave positions because they hadn't been formally charged. I think in this instance, I think she knew that she didn't have the support base that she needed. And I think as a result of that, as well as her loyalty to her political party, given that it was an election or is an election year, I think she wanted Parliament to remain untainted the position to remain untainted, but I also think she wanted to give her political party a fair chance. But also, I think that more importantly, you don't want people to know how weakened your position actually is within the political party and how little support there is. And in an instance like that, it is better for you to hand yourself over and for you to follow the rule of law and make sure that you follow due process as opposed to putting yourself in a compromised position. You know, uh, the, the legal process, the law itself, is, is supposed to, I suppose, in a sense, in an ideal world, be a tool to help those who deviate uh, from uh, right doing um, to, to be rehabilitated. Now, the effectiveness of the politically motivated defense is in itself um, not giving us the guarantee of a rehabilitation of a wrongdoer. Again, at this point, we don't know whether there is actual wrongdoing. And I think that's the exciting thing about following these legal proceedings in terms of what evidence would be given and so on. Again, as I previously mentioned, I think uh, charges of corruption, especially money laundering, is quite severe and quite serious. So it would be interesting to see what the case against her is, what information is being provided and so on. Because, I mean, you do have to build a strong case to show that someone has actually done something wrong. And in an instance like that, once that information is presented and if there is a solid case, um, only then would we be able to know whether it was politically motivated or whether there was an actual case for it. But until the evidence becomes public uh, knowledge, we, we unfortunately don't know who is in the right or who is in the wrong. But I do think just saying that it is politically motivated at this point in time could just be to give herself that breathing space until they know what the state knows and what these institutions have and then act and work on their defense. Senator Solomon, I appreciate your time. Thanks so much uh, for coming on in your intervention uh, this evening. Senator Solomon there uh, with that analysis. The